Well, welcome to the final walkthrough at my old house, AKA the fairy tale house, AKA 829 Northwest 40th Street. Um, we sign our papers later today and the new owners will sign theirs tomorrow. And yes, that will be our next big announcement is who is going to be the owner of this very beloved house. Um, so I thought we would do something kind of uh, very, a very sentimental walkthrough today, yep. but both a practical walkthrough as well. And if I sound a little bit hoarse or <laughs> I sound a little bit confused, I am not gonna lie, I am pretty exhausted. Uh, moving into a new house, moving out of this house, both the emotional pull of all of this, not to mention the physical one, has just been really exhausting, hasn't it, Stuart? It has. And I, um, so if I seem confused or a little bit daffy, then I ask your forgiveness. So that's going to lead to my question of the day. If you are an old follower, I want you to recount for me what your favorite memory is at this house, either inside or outside. If there is one iconic still, I, I love the fact that I can hear mm -hmm. I can hear Stuart walking across the floor <laughs> and the squeaky squeaky floors, which leads to probably one of the very first memories I have of this house when we first bought it. Um, the previous owners children said there is no way teenagers can ever sneak out of this house because the floors are so squeaky and i can remember that back to um, when we we bought it in november of uh, 1989 or 1990 I, i'm I'm kind of losing it on that. I can't remember exactly, but nevertheless, uh, let's let's do a tour. But beforehand, if you would, my question of the day is: What is your most iconic, most uh, I don't know, a memory or an image that has stickiness with you? Because I have I have lots of them. But before I travel too far down memory lane. We're going to go through each room, room by room, and, well, Stuart, what do you think? Let's just get started. Well, come on in. Let's start here. Let's start in what you guys know of as my office. It is, uh, it, it comes off of my bedroom, let me do that again, through these French doors. I've always heard that it's probably not a good idea to have your office right off of your bedroom because then you're always thinking about work, but I didn't find that to be the case. Um, this is where I wrote my book. This is where I had my first meeting with Stuart. Do you yes. remember oh, that? I do a remember million that. year, or it seems like a million years ago, but it really wasn't that long. We've had many meetings in here, and it's just a nice, cozy room. The reason I love it is because it's always had so much natural light. And right outside this window, was my Caddo Maple that in the fall was absolutely brilliant. It was so golden that it would make this room look as if it was illuminated by sunshine, even on a cloudy day. When we bought the house, none of this cabinetry was in here. We put all of this built-in, these built-in shelves, these built in, um, this built in cabinetry below. And it proved to be really wonderful when I needed storage. So I could hide printers and things in here. Um, <laughs> and you did. And I did. <laughs> um, but I also, this drawer, I have to, re I, I remember this drawer, Stuart. This was where I kept my kids' baby books. Aww. And and I, I'm proud to report that, yes, I did have a baby book for both for both boys. That's a lot of alliteration there. So it's in here. I have left, and here's one of my tips. 
um, I have left for the new owners the paint that matches these walls. Well, the that's considerate. Yeah, that's a nice little tip. And I always had it here handy so that I knew what went where. Um, in retrospect, when I installed these, I would have done maybe a few more things. I would have relocated some of the electrical outlets. I would have made a few modifications like that, but basically I was very pleased. Now, when we first moved into this house, I thought, oh, this, if I had done it, what's so funny is when you move into a new house, here's another tip, you live that house the way you envision it, not the way people, other people's perception of how it should be lived in expresses itself. So here's an example. When I first bought this house, I thought, oh, this room would be the fabulous nursery. Matt, you've got a kid, you know how that would be. Okay. Have a wonderful nursery off of the main bedroom. That was kind of how I saw it. But then everybody else told me, oh no, this is the bedroom and that would be a sitting area. And I took their advice and that's, and that's initially what we did. So this was our bedroom initially. But that was a long time ago, and I, I ultimately then turned this into my office. So here are, but here are a couple of really important memories that I have of this room. Number one, Stuart, you're one of them. That's awesome. I, sh I, shouldn't, I shouldn't put Stuart in bedroom, I guess, in the set, in the set. There would have been oh, office, geez. office and office and Stuart. When Stuart and I first met, we started working with Southern Living and Southern Living Plant Collection. And I don't know how many years ago that was I now. Think but five or maybe yeah, a maybe more. more than that, I think. Yeah. Uh, but we first met in here, and the rest and the rest is history. So that's probably my most Aww. iconic memory. In addition to working on my book, my How most sweet. iconic memory. That's my most iconic memory in here aw, too. Of this office. <laughs> As a bedroom, one of the things when it was used as a bedroom very long, long ago, initially, I, I remember, I can remember when we found out that my father-in-law died. Oh. And I can, I remember that all of us, my two boys, all of us, we just all got together and we all slept in the big bed together and tried to kind of absorb, absorb the news. So that's probably the memory that I remember most. Um, and it wasn't necessarily a bad memory. He lived a great life and we spent some time just talking about it and reflecting on his, on his life. So it was not necessarily a, a sad memory, but I really, I love this, I love this space. So my tip for these kinds of, these kinds of rooms would be really pay attention to where you have your electrical outlets and how you not only envision using this space as its first setup, but as it might be set up in the future. So in other words, if you had your desk over here, but you might ultimately have your desk over, over in this corner, take that into account when you have your electrician out and you are setting up your outlets and the positioning of your outlets. Um, the other thing is, is some of you in the past have commented, well, this would have made a wonderful window seat and it would have. However, these plantation shutters would have gotten in the way. And so that is something that you want, would want to think of. For me, many of you know that this was just a great spot for me to stage lots of my topiary. And quite frequently, there were two statuesque mm -hmm. topiary that were right here in the window. And consequently, it was not a window seat. It was a topiary seat, <laughs> <laughs> a topiary spot. So that's this room. Um, I, I love it. We did modify it, which brings me in, into, I guess the next space. So this wall used to be all the way over here. Oh. And this closet did not exist. There was a tiny, tiny little closet that was here. So when we redid this space, um, after my boys were gone, they were out of, they were uh, away to college and finally I got a a closet that was a little bit bigger than a postage stamp 
and we built this closet in. When we did that then, this to create this space, this wall needed to be bumped out. And then I had a wonderful contractor who was able to do that seamlessly, even replicating the coved ceiling. So I think that was, that was great. And um, here's, here's a little archeology. span <laughs> because this is where I kept my jeans. And, and so I would mark where my, where my straight jeans were, my boot jeans were, and my skinny jeans were. Okay, so my tip for this kind of space was this is actually an outside wall. You can tell from the eave here and the contour of, of the roof line. Consequently, it would get really cold in here. And so I, what I finally discovered in a duh moment not until I had used this closet for a number of years, was that I could put a space heater in here, a tiny little space heater in here. And it really made so much difference in the comfort level. I find, found that I would spend more time in here looking for clothes, wearing all of the clothes that I did have. And yes, this was exclusively my closet my husband closeted in another space. So we did that. We made a little bit of, of changes to the master bath. Um, it's still really small, um, but it was upgraded. We put in marble countertops um, and these shelves. This was from an image that I saw in a Pottery Barn catalog. Um, one tip that I did of my that I will share, but that I did not follow, is really all of your light bulbs should be in the same warm or cool <laughs> color palette. And I think we just it really shows it, up it, on camera. Yeah, it, I bet it shows blue. up on camera. Um, I think that was just we uh, we at the That's end good. we just stuck whatever we could in. in hey, yeah. lights, light. Yeah, some point. Yes, yes. And the other thing is, is it's important I think to have um, really good spotlights in places that you might want to highlight and it's even better when you have a rheostat on it yep so if you are going to use any special lighting putting a rheostat on it really helps and then likewise over here we had I, I don't know that I've ever seen this part. You haven't seen this I part? Okay. I came over here and noticed okay, this. Okay, so ever. this, and, and there's an outlet here. So this was where I could I could plug in things, like a phone charger. And How is that? Yes, very, very, very convenient. Now here is a little thrifting tip that I found myself doing. Once I got bathroom spaces that had marble tops, I started looking for marble accessories when I went thrifting. So I found marble vases, I found marble stands, I found all sorts of different marble um, little clediments that I would use all throughout these spaces. And then it looked more Oh, clean and homogenous and really like everything matched and I liked that. Um, so that would be another little tip that I would give you. The other tip I would, I would say is have your uh, shower curtain rod professionally installed by someone because they just kept falling down. Um, and my husband is, he, he, I, I keep telling him move like a feather, move like a feather, but he, just moves like a big old tough guy. And so he would pull on the shower curtain really hard and down would come the <laughs> entire assembly. So I would say if you can hardwire in or, or hard <laughs> install your shower curtain. So those would, be, those would be my tips. Use lighting that's all consonant with one another, all the same. And then look for fun, whatever room it is. If you've got a certain kind of finish when you go thrifting, look for different finishes. Another tip was in this old house, this used to be a space heater that was down here. I can show you an example in another bathroom. And when we renovated, we took that out and in that recess, we put a shallow little cabinet. So that's, Smart. yeah, so that's another idea. Um, I would say from this, from this bathroom, my most iconic, iconic memories are, and this goes back before we redid it, but we had an old fashioned 
square bathtub. We had some of that old, really old 40s, 30s and 40s tile in here. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that? One of the bathtubs. Yeah, and there was this here. big square bathtub back in here, which was perfect when your kids were little and bathing. And I can, I remember oh, both boys, but especially my son, Jamer, and he would just, he loved to take baths and he would make what he would call his potions and he would play with, <laughs> with shampoo yes, and conditioner. Yes. Does your son do oh, that? Yes, yes. yes. And he would sit there and play with his, his potions for hours, just, well, not for hours. But till he was <laughs> till he was pretty real. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and to this day, he still loves all of those kind of grooming <laughs> products. As an adult, he'll get mad at me for saying that. But I can I can really remember the other thing. He'll get mad at me for saying this too. I can remember when he was in maybe elementary school. He was a really good basketball player when he was when he was younger in grade school and in middle middle school. And I can, I can remember one time he was particularly distraught because he had missed a free throw at the end of the game and, and he thought he'd lost the game because of that free throw that he missed. Oh. So he was so distraught. It's a he big was, moment. Oh, big in, moment. In he was crying life. and everything. And I said, you know that there is nothing that a cup of hot cocoa and a hot bath can't cure. And you didn't lose the game. That man at every pot, at every moment prior to that, that moment lost the game. And it, I don't know that it really helped, but the hot chocolate <laughs> did and the hot bath did. And once he was he was in here, I think by the time he got out of the tub, he felt a lot better. So that's that's a little shared wisdom. There's not a lot that, that um, a hot bath can't solve or a cup of hot tea or wine in the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> and some ibuprofen. That is that is probably my biggest memory from this bathroom. Okay, now again, we're in a very small space here. This is really a fun a fun place. So this was my accessory closet, and this was where I hung all of my costume jewelry, my belts, scarves, things like that, via the brilliance of this stuff, which is my tip for this space called slot wall or slat wall. You can get this, uh, well, you can get it a lot of different places, and then you can get all of these hooks, which I am leaving for the new owner. You can get all of these hooks and things online. I actually probably saw this first. Well, you may have seen it in two different places. <laughs> you may have seen it in Claire's, that's that young girl's accessory store at the mall. Like that, right. And you may have also seen it, it's used a lot in garages. And so after I used, and by the way, this was at the recommendation of my contractor that we put this in here. It was his idea, but I think it looks kind of cool. I had a mirror hung right here so that I could put on my earrings and things. And then here is, Stuart, if you want to look down there, you can hear some voices downstairs. This was the, the old fashioned laundry chute. Now, one thing, one comment I would make on this, people were smaller back in the 30s and 40s because that laundry chute is really small. <laughs> and, and, you know, hi down there. Can you, can you oh, <laughs> yes, yes, and they're they're downstairs doing some work. So, but now um, a, a pair of my husband's jeans will barely fit through that laundry. <laughs> barely oh. fit through that laundry chute. So people used to be smaller back then. Here is another tip when we redid the bathroom. Yeah, I've seen this before. It's we, yeah, we had not a panel installed, but we had this little cubby installed, and so they can access. Without having the, to tear yeah, it up. Yeah, the plumbing and everything through there without having to tear it up. So, uh, so that would be my tip for this uh, very tiny closet, but I think it was well used space and I enjoyed it. And this is probably one thing I will really miss. At You're not going to do anything. I'm sure this is going to be a question asked. Are you doing anything like this at the new N house? Not exactly like this. For one thing, I am really paring down. I've given away a ton of the stuff that was in here. I've given away a ton of clothing. Um, I had uh, a bunch of my girlfriends over and I just put everything on my bed and I let them go through and take whatever they wanted. And I have some more culling to do, which I, which I will do. Um, but, but, uh, but this has just been front. I guess my iconic memory for this, Stuart, mm -hmm. is when I would hang stuff up and periodically I would let 
anyone I knew, relatives or friends, close friends, and I would say, do you want to shop my closet? And because I had lots of costume jewelry that I inherited from my second mother and yeah, my mother-in-law. Yeah, you mother -in -law. had a closet full. I had a closet full. <laughs> and I would let people come in here. I said, you want to shop my closet? And I would tell them, you know, there were some things that were off limits. But I would let them shop my closet. That's so, awesome. Yeah, so it was love that kept on, you know, stuff that kept on giving. And uh, especially meaningful if, they, if it was a friend that also knew my mother-in-law or also knew my mother and then they got something that belonged to them. That was kind of fun. So, um, Stuart, I'm going to be good and I'm going to turn out the lights as we leave each space. That kind of gives me some closure. Well, I don't remember what magazine it was that I saw it in, but someone had just a fabulous bedroom library and they had an entire shelving unit that was served as a backdrop to the bed itself and I recreated that look. Now when we when we bought the house we put in this shelving it did not used to be here and initially this was a sitting room and it was a playroom for the kids. We had a great big colorful rug in here that we got in Santa Fe. There used to be over here Stuart a huge armoire that you are familiar with because oh, yeah. I believe you helped me. We made some boo boos, but you helped me hang a TV over and here. Unplug all that stuff. And unplug all of all of this <laughs> stuff. But there used to be a huge armoire here, and this is where uh, the TV lived when the boys were little, and we watched I don't know how many Disney movies and movies in general here. And this is where the the uh, then cable came in, <laughs> and. And so here, okay, here's a couple of, of cool ideas that I did with my kids when they were small. Um, and you do this regardless of what your political persuasion is. But when they were growing up, every time there would be a presidential election, there would be any momentous historical event that would be on TV. I would have my children and maybe their playmates, the neighbors that lived next door, stand in front of the TV during the inauguration, during the lighting of a Christmas tree at Christmas time in Rockefeller Center, things that I just really wanted to capture moments in time when they were young. And I still have those still images and it was a fun thing to do. Not dissimilar to when you plant a tree and you have your child. Do you do that? Have you done that with your with with your we son, a tree yet. Matt? I'm talking to Matt. Okay. So then you you know you take a picture next to the tree and you see them both grow. So it's equally as fun, I think, to document a historical event that's on TV um, with your children in front of it. So you can say, well, this is what. This is what it looked like when so-and-so was inaugurated. Again, I did it with every president, whether I liked them or not. And <laughs> it's kind of a, a nice historical reference for them as they grew up over time. And especially interesting if, like my children, they had an interest in history. It could also have been something, um, some kind of world event. Um, and I would take pictures of them standing in front of the TV with an iconic image playing in the background. That was before it was cool. really, it was really easy <clears throat> to take video. Now I would have taken video, but I do have a lot of stills of that and it's kind of a fun point of reference. Um, so in, in this room, I, I think some of my iconic memories are more from, from when this room was um, was a family living space when the boys were little. Um, I can remember when the boys would have, uh, have ear infections growing up and they couldn't sleep and I can remember lying with them on the couch and we would always put on Bambi. Um, we would put on Bambi when they couldn't get back to sleep. So I can remember doing that with them, staying up with them when they were sick late at night and it was, it was just a really wonderful wonderful room. This was where they, I can hear them say, mama, make a zoo, make a zoo <laughs> with all of their, their, cre their cr creatures, but all of their play things. Um, I can remember all of those Disney figures that you had. You remember all of those Disney character figures oh, that you used to everything. buy at the Disney store from all of the movies. Yeah. So we would, you know, we would have them from the little mermaid. We would have them from, uh, the line. We have all of them. And my kids used to make parades. They would make parades and they would say, Mom, let's have a parade. Um, <laughs> and then the castles they would build and the Legos that were 
constantly being stepped upon and and ouch. Uh, yeah ouch but it was fun and then we always had to to make sure when they were little that that door was always shut because you know when there were toddlers we didn't want them toddling down the stairs or tumbling down the stairs as the case would be so that's what i remember um, when we redid this space we built this used to have a pitiful little surround to it and we built a new surround based on an image that I, I saw and I just always loved this and I loved the painting of Canyon de Chez that used to hang over this that now hangs in our new bedroom um, and and then lastly um, I'm a gal my husband and I we are big readers and we love our books and it's been one of the most difficult things about leaving is calling out some of those books um, and it, it was always comforting in some way for me, uh, both comforting and discomforting to be surrounded by all those books. And, and I, I loved having those friends with me at all times, but now I notice in our new home, without this behind me, I also don't feel the pressure of all of them telling me to <laughs> oh, wow. read them, dust <laughs> them, get rid of some of them. So it's, that says a lot about what's in your surroundings and how it makes it, you it feel. really does. It makes me feel a little less stressed. So even though I loved having them here, it also was kind of stressful because there were so many things there that I felt like I, I had the pressure that I needed to read. And now there's nothing here but my jacket and <laughs> the remnants of me cleaning and yet Yes, yesterday, um, even though they will have deep cleaners come in, and some of the gals are downstairs right now, I did deep clean all of this myself. Did I not, Stuart? Did I not whine about being You so did. Tired? I heard twice yesterday about it, so yes. Yes, um, and I did. I mopped <laughs> these floors. I cleaned every slat in those blinds. Um, lastly, oh, and now your new house looks like a bookstore factory or something. Uh, yeah, it looks like a... It looks like it just a library exploded in it yeah. or whatever. We, we will not go there for a while till I <laughs> renew some order. Um, this, I, I just have always loved this little dormer closet. This is, is that iconic peak that, that made people call it the fairy tale house. Um, and this is, this is that peak for, it has had so many iterations of use when, when computers, <laughs> First started to become a thing that shows how old I am. <laughs> um, but this is where we would have those dial-up modems and everything in here. And it, this closet always remained cold, so I had to have a space heater in here. But this was this was the first version of my office, and this is where we had the computer. Later on, it just was a, a storage place where I could store all sorts of different things in here. And I even, when it was my little office, I had a bulletin board in here, you can see. And this is where I'd ha I would have pictures of my boys. It never really met my expectation of being an inspiration board because it just wasn't large enough. Uh, but this was a, a, a sweet You've little closet. You've got a closet. lot of inspiration, don't you? I did get a lot of inspiration. Here's my tip. <laughs> Here's my tip for this room. When we bought this, it had a solid door here. And I, I, you hear me talk about the importance of light in my life, which is one of the reasons that we're moving from this house. I want even more light. Um, but this used to be a solid door right here. So this is my tip. If you have a solid door and you want to bring in more light into a space and the other offset room has a window, then take off that solid door and put in a new door that has paned lights. So we put in this door with muttons. It's got beveled glass. It's a beautiful door, I think. It also speaks to the vintage of this house and speaks to the French doors. And I cannot believe how much more light it yeah. brings into the space. It helped quite a few shoots. Yeah, it helped quite a few shoots. So, um, but I did this before you were in my house. I know, store. I know. But that's a great idea. If you want to get more light into your life, then replace a solid door with one. Many of you have asked what the color is, the, the paint color of this is, and I really, I, I just don't remember. Um, but it's kind of a taupey color that yeah. goes taupe or beige or green. Or I was about to say it's a little green. Yeah, depending on the, on the time of day. And in here, lighting was also real important. So we had spotlights that were over the bookcases. So you can see 
when we were looking for a specific book or whatever that would help us find it. And this also had rheostats on it. I think every light should have a rheostat on it. Um, and what do then you call we, those? That's the rheostat. The fader? It's the, the dimmer. The dimmer. dimmer. That's, what's the real word for it again? I call it a rheostat. Is that rheostat. the right word? You could I be right. I, I don't think know. it is. It, there's yeah. another question. If I'm yeah. not right, uh, then then you tell me because you guys are always good about telling me I'm wrong. Well, they are, and I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Um, okay. So over the mantle, we had a beautiful piece of artwork and it too had a spotlight. And that way you don't necessarily have to install an art lamp or something above it. And I really, really love that. When I love a room that's only lit by those where it's dark everywhere else but the spotlights yeah, are on. Yeah, it's, it's cool. really it's really dramatic. So that kind of wraps up this area that we I guess we would refer to as a master suite. I now know that that is not appropriate anymore and now realtors call it the primary suite or the primary bedroom versus the master bedroom. But I think that wraps up this section. So We'll go on to the next session after this little break. Well, this hallway then leads to what, oh, but first, oh, let me show you this really old fashioned thing here. This, this is where the phones used to be. It's pretty cool. So, yeah, so you would, and this would hide, we always kept kind of a flashlight in here. It's a cool place to have your yeah, phone chargers. Yeah. Um, phone chargers, but <laughs> phone, yeah, phone. really. Uh, but this was where your phone book would yeah. be, and then your phone would be right here. And this may be probably. somehow connected to the doorbell. I'm, I'm not really sure, oh, wow. um, but it was it was a fun a fun little vestige of of that era. And then we had a mirror at the end of the hall, and this was one thing that I always thought, oh, I'm going to replace that with a better mirror, and I am going to put. We did use this wallpaper we installed this wallpaper when we moved in I would change the wallpaper but these are the kind of things that were kind of compelling me to move because I didn't want to do those things I wanted the next owner to do that and so um, and so they they shall uh, this this room has morphed so many different ways this was the the nursery when we moved in, I should have I should have gone with my instincts and had the nursery and where my office was, but this was the nursery. And and I would say that when we first moved in and we fixed up every room, this was my favorite room, and it was my favorite room probably because it was where the nursery was, and and it it just looked so cool to me, and it may <laughs> sound hideous, but it was wonderful. We painted the walls a periwinkle bluish lavender and a really Ooh. vibrant color. And I had a zebra skin rug in here, the one that you guys have seen in my new house. And by the way, let me reiterate that my husband is not a hunter, that that was a very precious uh, belonging that belonged to my brother-in-law who's who's very one of his very good friends was curator at the San Francisco Zoo and when animals would pass he and his and his friends would process them and and anyhow it was a beautiful beautiful thing and I think I, I do think when it, it there's just inherent beauty to those to those skins so we had that in here and then we had on this wall and these are going to you will see these again we had them framed in wonderfully a wonderful bright red, and there was a montage, a grid here of six Andy Warhol wild animal prints that were really, really vibrant. And then we had a pale, a pale wood um, baby bed here. And, and then there were bookshelves in here with all of their favorite baby books. It was just wonderful. There was a, obviously a rocking chair because you have to have a rocking chair in a nursery. And it was, as you can see, it was really, really bright. And um, I can, it looks out at the big and battered tree outside. Oh, and you can is. see, see how tall those uh, foster hollies, when we planted those, they were maybe six feet tall and look at them now. That's look crazy. at they're kind of sheared on one side from a recent ice storm. And, um, and then we had all the bookshelves here and this was a window seat. This was all already here when we bought the house. So there's, 
there's storage underneath here and we had cushions here and really bright pillows and the boys sometimes would sit here and read and if you're cold and you sit in this space and you get that wonderful south sun it's just really really delicious and then as they got older uh, the you know the baby bed was taken out there were two bright red metal twin beds that were in here for a while they had bunk beds my boys always shared a room and you know growing up i had nine brothers and sisters and we none of us ever got a private room until everybody else had moved out um, and so i felt it was important that they share a room and i yeah, think they're glad that cool. they did and it also always gave us an extra guest room so uh, oh my goodness so many so many many memories in here um, in fact i was standing over here there was a changing table over here and I was changing uh, my younger son Jamie when I heard a huge noise and I thought that some people had knocked over some dogs had knocked over the trash cans I did not know what had happened but I got the boys ready to go to pre-care at the church just up the street and when I got there I found out about the Oklahoma City bombing Stuart mm -hmm. and that noise that I heard was just the carnage that was the Oklahoma City bombing and walked my boys down and of course it was just we were just completely shaken all of us um, and I'm sure you both have your memories of oh, when yeah. you were much younger but algebra I, class shook the windows yeah yeah really really frightening um, so so I, I think of that uh, but most of the memories in here are very, very, very happy. I, I can remember, oh, my son Johnny was just such a reader. And, and there was just, when he, when growing up, he was going to have a library and he was, and he's quite the intellectual to this day. He was, he probably read all of the classics by the time he was in sixth grade. He was such a, he was such a reader. And, but I can remember one, one time when he was mad about something, I think it was, you know how it is, Matt, when you're trying to get, you're trying to get your kids to sleep in their own big boy beds or big girl beds or whatever. And they keep wanting to sleep with mom and dad. Oh, yeah. I know <laughs> and I can remember one time in particular where we were really trying to get him to sleep in his own bed and he would have none of it. And he was always, Always prone to drama so you come in here and said I'm gonna throw myself out the window <laughs> I'm just gonna throw myself out the window um, if, if I can't if I can't get back in you know he didn't say the parental bed but that's right. well, look, we can shoot one of the last times Jamie pulls in the driveway yeah oh yeah and it still gets me every time I see the salt sign out there, doesn't oh, yeah. it, Stuart? And, and of course, there was a great view from here that would, you would look down upon the azaleas and the hellebores. And the tulips. And tulips and everything. And it's just, this was kind of a, this was a magical room for them, I think. Um, and it was certainly a magical space for me and just holds so many, many wonderful memories. Look over here, just so you'll know that this, this aged in place with them. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that they would have a pull-up bar. Notice I cannot do that. Nope, cannot do it. Looks like you had it professionally installed as Professionally well. installed as well. People hurt themselves really it, bad trying to hang those on. Yeah, a tiny little closet. <laughs> and then we left some, you know, I, I kind of like domestic archaeology. And so we would keep little remnants of what was here before. So this oh, is some, some of Berber. the old, old carpet. Is that Berber? I think that's Berber. Is that what you call it? Yeah. Old, old carpet. And the closets were just so tiny. Um... And you can see later. Yeah, compared to your new closet, right? Yeah, this compared is all to my new closet. Pretty small. Yeah, this is this was one of my husband's closets, and um, we always stickers. yeah this, this stickers. Yeah, you can see Jamie yeah, everywhere. Yeah, big bend and canoeing. So I think we need to move on to the next space. What do you think? I think so. Okay, let's do it. Now, this is one room that for the most part was untouched and also one of the, 
reasons we decided to move because this bathroom really needs an overhaul. And you can see that it, it still contains practically everything and looks almost identical to the way it looked when we moved in. This is the old, old wallpaper. This is the old, old tile. I'm not even going to turn on the light because it's now connected to a fan and you wouldn't be able to hear me, but this old, this old medicine cabinet. The wallpaper is um, pretty busy. Yeah. We did replace, Ooh, showing them Stuart. we did replace the sink. Um, and over the years, obviously we needed a new toilet, but that's the very old bathtub, wrought iron bathtub that needs to be reglazed. Uh, in other words, this room just needs a lot of work, but it it's was, look, I could see it remodeled looking really cool. I love the step going up. Yeah. The step bathtub. going up. It's just, it's just an interesting space with an old, another old cabinet. Um, and the but, tile work is pretty cool. Yeah, the tile work. The problem is when the tile would be damaged, you, it was You're not... never going to find it, are never you? Gonna <laughs> find, yeah, never going to find it. So from a practical standpoint, this needed some work to be needs some work to be done. And it was one of the decision points. We thought, okay, we could... Are we going to stay? Are we going to go oh, if we're yeah. going to stay? And it ain't cheap to redo a bathroom. I've done it. But... The, Twice. Yeah, yes. You got a really cool bathroom, Stuart. You did it yourself too. Um, yeah, but this this is you know it just needs to be redone. But my tip here would be that it's it would be very expensive and almost impossible to change that cast iron tub, but it can be reglazed and it will be reglazed. Um, but then you no can no fun to take out of there. No, no. That um, was one of the hardest things. And interestingly, this bathroom is, is bigger than than the primary bath, but the uh, but you can easily, you know, take out and replace in these old homes the vanity and we and we did that. But uh, this and it oh I must point out too this kind of cool starburst or wavy glass or whatever oh, yeah, that is it's also neat. original to the house and then in here say, say and then in here again because i'm just going to cut to you here okay. so just start three okay. two and then across from that bathroom is a linen closet and and here is my moving tip <laughs> Since I hadn't moved in 32 years, I was very inexperienced at it, and I did not know certain things. And here is my best moving tip. This contained all of my kids' baby books, uh, lots of baby blankets, lots and lots of photographs and things of that nature. Um, and I, you, you always want to do this very, very last. Mm -hmm. Don't... <laughs> move this closet first because you will get sucked into a black oh, hole wow, yeah. of looking at images of rereading the baby books and before you know it you have spent an entire afternoon or day <laughs> traveling way too far down memory lane and it's hard to make yourself come back and it can also be pretty um, emotionally rigorous so i would say do that last. Time travel is real. Time travel is very, very real. Um, and then we're not going to walk in here because there's some residue on the floor. But uh, oh, from the mat under the rug. Yeah, the mat under the rug yeah. slowly disintegrated over time. Um, that needs to be swept up. But this was my I my homes have some of my spaces have very much a kind of a masculine quality to them. And when we, and partly because I always lived in a house full of men, I was the only gal. So this was my one concession to femininity. I still love this wallpaper. We put this in when we first moved in. It's a Vilroy and Bach, and I loved it. This was always the guest bedroom. Uh, it, when we first moved in, it, it had brown wallpaper and it was just pretty awful, but it had this trim shelf around the top of, of the door frames and the window frames. And by the way, uh, none of these plantation shutters were here when we bought the house. We put in all of the plantation shutters. There's two, there's two small closets in here. Um, this, ha this one has a ceiling fan. And then here's, here's a tip. If you live in a two-story house, I, I 
learned later, um, it's always good to have a two-story ladder so that you can hang it on the window frame and you can exit from the upstairs in the case of fire. So that is a two-story two fire ladder that we keep route. upstairs, an escape route that we kept, uh, that we will leave here for the new owners. But this room in the, in the morning, oh my goodness, it gets wonderful east light and it always looks out onto the garden outside. Ooh, I don't know that I've ever seen this view. Yeah, which this means is a, no one else has ever seen it either. I know, this is a great view, isn't it? Everybody, we're experiencing a view for the first, first time, time together. And in the, in the, um, That's pretty cool. In the spring when all of the red buds would be in bloom, absolutely magical. I know, why did I, what? Absolutely magical. Linda, this is a bit late. Oh, I'm sorry, Stuart. I, I didn't. I, I, I'm <laughs> this not. Was really this good, was a room. I don't think I even realized this window this, pointed this way. Well, and this was a room I just wasn't in very often. It was the guest. It was the guest room. And I guess my uh, best memories of, of this room would be later on when my boys, as adults, would come and stay. They would stay in the guest bedroom with, and later with their wives. So uh, this was one room I just never spent a lot of time in. Me I guess. Either. Yeah, yeah, and obviously Stuart either, and he has a problem with that. I can I, tell. I wish I would have known. I don't know. I Sometimes it's weird when you get in a room, you don't really know, remember which way you're pointing. Well, Stuart, I think that this pretty much uh, sums up the upstairs. So after this break, should we go downstairs? I definitely think so. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Well, when we first bought this house and I saw this stair railing, the first thing I imagined was having kids coming down here on Christmas morning and looking through <laughs> here and peeking their heads through this railing that would be covered in greenery and all sorts of Christmas decorations. And sure enough, Stuart, I think we've got some pictures. Uh, of I know that. we do. When, when my boys would come down in their matching jammies on Christmas and they would look through here. Um, it was also just sometimes it was just a nice spot to kind of hang out just on the stairs where you're betwixt and between the upstairs and the downstairs. And then for years, I had one of those upstairs downstairs baskets that was formed that form fitted the upstairs the the step and it was pretty pretty wonderful because one thing that I always found was if you had something upstairs it, you needed it downstairs and vice versa and that's the the common vexation of having a two-story house but um, but I, I loved this stairwell and seeing this beautiful mahogany woodwork because you would see this when you entered through the front door and I always thought it was really really beautiful and we added a runner later to protect the stairs and there's this this nice just little landing here that was always it never it never felt too crowded but it did present some issues when you would be moving large pieces of furniture upstairs yeah oh, and that's that. given me a look like yeah, yeah because it was very difficult to turn this corner and so when we would take couches or things like that a lot of times we would have to take the feet off of them there were some furniture that we had intended to go upstairs and we it never made it upstairs because it simply could not travel. It was just too big. How did you get the armoire up there? How, how did we get the armoire? Well, it never went up there. That's one of the reasons it was always downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> because we couldn't get it up there. Um, this cabinetry I also thought was really, really cool. Um, it had this beautiful glass work, leaded glass window work in here. And this is where we always kept our stereo and it is it is lit you can see all of the insufferable wires and everything that go along with the stereo cabinet wire. cabinetry and this here was just always we used it for different things we'd use it for a bar i used it as kind of a makeshift shift desk um a lot of times it just held nothing but family photographs and then underneath here there was also storage so we could have different things finding any kind of storage in these old houses was just always was always something to consider. And look at that great grill work. Ooh, and that needs to be dusted. Um, that great grill work there. 
And there was always, you know, we always had beautiful rugs. And I always loved the gracious way that these steps came down into the living room and then back up into the dining room. And the, we were maybe some of the few people that actually used their living room and we used it even without a TV. Now I will say this, we used it a lot more in the recent past when our kids were adults than we did as a family when they were younger because a lot of our time was just spent up in, in the areas where the toys were and there weren't a lot of toys in here. Um, but boy, we have entertained so much in this space. Um, one thing, one very important thing that we did was this, uh, this little furnace inset was not working when we bought the house and it is now operational and really can heat up this room and it saved us many a time when when we would have an ice storm steward mm -hmm. or when a power would go out and I stopped there for a minute because I remembered one horrible <sighs> oh. horrible episode when we had no we had no power we had no heat it was during one of our ice storms and the kids, the neighbor boys were sleeping down here and we had this on and they were all out spread over here and we had this heater on. And in the middle of the night, I just had that mom intuition and I thought I smelled something and I came down oh, no. here and my son Jamer got cold and he had come right up next to the heater, even though they had been instructed not to. And even <laughs> oh, though there no. was something to obstruct it, he got right up close to it and his blanket, the tip of his blanket was on the was smoldering furnace and I could smell oh, it upstairs. Man. So what did I do? I promptly came down here and started beating on him. Uh, and uh, woke all the neighborhood kids up and everything it was very traumatic because that was also I was under stress because that was one of the times when the trees uh, tree was really pummeled with ice so I, I remember that but this mostly I this is just seasonal space this was Christmas space this was where the Christmas tree was where I had an umpteen amaryllis that were in bloom in here where we would have parties where we would entertain and where we would have some of our our favorite artwork uh, the Shapiro that hung above the mantle and just loved it and I have to I have to say that we had this this treatment granted it doesn't look great right now because it's you know it's empty and there's all sorts of of hangers in place but this treatment this faux finish this was we had this done long before faux finishes were popular and we saw this treatment in two different places we saw it at a boutique hotel in New Orleans and also a boutique hotel called the Majestic in San Francisco and we took lots of pictures and then we came back and we did not have a painter, but we found some artists, some art students who could replicate this look for us. And if you look carefully at some of the veining in the corners and things, that's because it's, it, it simulated the look of old pubs and old places that would be smoky in bars and restaurants. And the residue of tobacco smoke and coal heating and things like that would then rise up the walls and kind of dirty the walls in this kind of veining way and it would hang in the corners of the space. And so that was a, a technique and a finish that we had replicated and I have always loved it. It was very expensive to have done. One of the things that when we bought this house, we splurged on um, and we, we were a little chintzy in other areas, but we absolutely loved it. The veining of it still thrills me when I look at it. And I think it's really, really beautiful and very much speaks to the vintage of this house and the rounded coved walls. And these, I've always just loved the rounded nature of the entryways. I just think it's really, really beautiful. Which leads me, I then, and, and by the way, these plantation shutters, these uh, mahogany plantation shutters were in place when we bought the house. 
The downstairs floors were in very, very good shape, but the upstairs, upstairs floors we had to have completely refinished. Um, I, since it worked so well upstairs to bring more light in, I did the same thing with this door right here. And actually, <clears throat> this, there wasn't even a door in place here, but I found the door in the basement and I had bevel glass put in it. And that way we could separate this space from that space. And I just love the look of looking through these, these paned beveled glass doors. And then we found some of the original doorknobs and everything, and we put those in place. And some of these, like the, the switch plates and such, that was original to the house and haven't been changed in gosh knows, I don't know how many years. So let's move this way a little bit, Stuart, into what for most of our life here in this house was the red dining room. So this is another original plate, a little simpler. Uh-oh, we've got a light out on the chandelier, which is original to the house. This too is on a dimmer switch. And this was where we had our great dining room table. Got a and few I, pictures of that. And I, yeah, and I love setting a dining room, a dining room, beautiful dining room table. Um, over here is all of the cabinetry that we had built subsequent to buying the house. So this this was, this was done maybe 15 years ago um, by a trim carpenter it's named beautiful. Monty, and we put beveled glass in here, and this was where I could store all of my linens and my china, and here's my tip. If you do it, put lighting in it, and we illuminated these cabinets, so it looked really special at night, and this is, this is mahogany. And, and it was not inexpensive to do. When we installed this, here's a tip. We removed some of the original trim. We put it back in place. And then, oh, and I can't think of the term for, for these. There is a term for these, but then we added some additional trim to make it all look as if it was original to the house. Pediments. Um, trim pediments maybe and um, and then this also you can probably remember having seen some topiary and amaryllis and such staged in this area and then this is right below the boys bedroom see I knew this one you knew this one looking out to the azalea bed watch your head as you go by the chandelier <laughs> and this was, this was, I, I saw it in a magazine, rich red walls of the dining room. I was obsessed with it. And one of the reasons to have a red dining room it, it, is because it just makes all of the guests, the, the glow or the, the reddish hues off of people's skin, it just really made everyone look wonderful by candlelight. But over time, I decided, I, I have this counterintuitive thing, Stuart. So, so for when I first painted my walls red, it was a Ralph Lauren leather red finish. Um, and I absolutely loved it. And I had it that way for many, many years. And in the course of that time, it was popular. It, it was not popular. And just as red walls and really color infused paint Tr uh, treatments are becoming more popular. Now's when I decide to go in the opposite direction and I painted this a sage green. So I tend to be counter against the trends. If it's popular, then I, I want to change it. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me. Um, so, but there's a, a really long vista and a really, really beautiful, beautiful space. So now let's go to the kitchen. Well, now we are coming into the room that you guys are probably most familiar with, 
the heart of the home, AKA the kitchen and the breakfast room. And without furniture in here, it looks so much bigger. That's right? what I, we and Matt said when we I walked know, in. It's I, like, wow, this house I is actually pretty say, big. <laughs> um, when we first bought this house, there was just a regular door frame that came from the kitchen. And we've got a ab shot of this About too. right here. And it came into this breakfast room and, and the house stopped, stopped about right here. Oh, okay. And there was built-in cabinetry all through here. Well, we bumped it out. We put in these French doors that go out into, into the garden. And then we put in some of the best money we've ever spent. We put a fireplace in here. Now, if, um, if I were moving back into this house right now, I would probably do things differently from an aesthetic standpoint but from a living standpoint my husband would have none of it because this was where his dad chair was this was where the mom chair was though i use that term loosely because i never <laughs> sat in the mom chair um, but my mother-in-law always did and that's one of my happiest memories because she would sit here while i would cook um, actually, anybody would sit here I sat while I would cook. cook. You would sit here. <laughs> uh, my kid, my my son Johnny would come home. He would read by the fire, and the fireplace was just it really. And even in this tiny little space, it was just the heart of the home. And when I would have Thanksgiving here, when I would entertain, there'd be this whole other house, and everybody would be right would be right here in front of the fireplace. And um, there was different ways that I would sometimes configure it. This, this area played prominently in the Victoria Magazine house shoot that we did. Um, Cause sometimes I would have the breakfast table here and I would rearrange my furniture based on the season. So that's a tip in some of your spaces. You just, you know, do you seasonally or you might consider seasonally rearranging your furniture. And I would do that to take advantage of the French doors to go in and outside. But increasingly, my husband just, he just wanted his dad chair to stay right there in that spot. And sometimes you make concessions to your loved ones. <laughs> so the fact that we moved his dad chair all the way to a different house is quite it was quite momentous. Um, but this was just a really, really special space. And I, I have so many happy memories of the kids reading here, doing their homework here, of, of family members here. Um, but, but recently, I think some of my happiest memories would be just coming down in the morning, lighting a fire, and Hubs and I would have coffee down here. I would do my meditating down here. I would light my candles, light a fire, and it was just so cozy. And if it was snowing outside. I was about to say. Oh my goodness. It was really, really well, cozy. I've seen many of pics that you took just sitting here and noticing how pretty it was. And yeah, I, get, I get a text in the morning, and, look at this. <laughs> yeah. And, and see, and see how the garden changed yeah. over, over the season because Stuart you can look right right now through that doorway and it's just just beautiful this I will I will really miss that view and, and and can you see that little that that little mama cardinal out there we've got a fence panel down because some work's being done but there's but hubs would like to sit and look at the birds and just look at what was going on I would curse the squirrels and then secretly like them and then you right now, admit it once. yeah. And then right now, this is obviously being deep, deep cleaned. Um, but this is where what little culinary magic I could make happen happened. And we redid this kitchen when we first bought it. The refrigerator wasn't even in here. The refrigerator was in what became the laundry room. The laundry room was downstairs in the basement, um, and we completely redid redid this kitchen. And this, by the way, this palladium-like window. Oh, and of course I, ha I have to leave some amaryllis oh, for, the, that's nice. for the new owner. <laughs> it but really is th nice. <laughs> the, when we redid the kitchen, I just had to have a palladium window. And the first version of this palladium window, what, it, was it in one of our ice storms, Stuart? I can't remember. 
there's been so many apocalyptic weather events since we lived here. But there was something that completely shattered and ruined this window. Oh, wow. And we had to complace it, replace it in its entirety. And when we did, we went through one of the really formidable heavyweight ones with the deep sill. And I'm so glad we did because it's one of my favorite things at the house. And probably the thing I will miss most is the view out into the garden. Though I promise I will create new views, but it's it was pretty spectacular and watching the seasons change pretty wonderful and not a shabby view to have while you're doing dishes not um, at all. yeah so but one thing uh one thing that i really have to say that i love about the new cottage is that i have so much more surface area upon which to cook it was always a little bit restricted in here for um for surface area in trying to cook and the fact that I'll have a little bit more is great. I still have a professional range at the new at the new place, but um, but this had all sorts of ingenious cabinetry like this. The reason this is shallow is because there's a flue behind it, and we turned it into love the colors. Yeah, we turned it into a spice rack, and now green kitchens are all the rage again. So as soon as green kitchens are the rage, I've got a kitchen that's white. Um, <laughs> They're falling out of favor, and so it's in favor with me. But I love this. Growing up, this was just, and this is beautiful maple wood, but this was just so easy to keep clean with little fingerprints and everything, and it was really wonderful. And we, we really tried to maximize the utility of every hidden little space. So there are odd-shaped cabinets. Um, I always thought that was cool. Yeah, that was always kind of cool. Um, so yeah, we made cabinets out everywhere, everywhere we could. And that was, uh, that was very helpful because again, you have to maximize what storage space you can find in these old houses. The pots and pans were hung above the stove and that saved some cabinet space. So, uh, and Stuart, you have enjoyed a few things that have been whipped up in this kitchen. Absolutely. If I am not mistaken. I have eaten quite a few things, actually. Good Lord, all the, the get-togethers the, <laughs> with everybody and everybody bringing all the food here. Yeah, yeah. When, when, uh, when Stuart became part of the family, he became part of all of the celebrations and things. And so... Um, if, a neat group of people. A neat group of people. And there was many a times I fed you. Uh, yes. Shoots. Well, may have not been real fancy, but you, oh, if you came hungry, eat. you didn't leave hungry. We eat. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> then that leads us into the laundry room don't trip over uh, buckets I think I can get over and it. things I got um it. we're not going to go down into the basement because it could be a little bit treacherous but one of the smartest things my mother-in-law did was tell me when we bought this house to move the washer and dryer up from the basement oh that is smart and we did and it it I didn't necessarily, this would have made a great mud room. It would have gr had all sorts of applications, but practicality and having um, three men in your life that you're constantly doing laundry for, it saved my back and it probably saved my marriage to have all of the laundry up here. <laughs> and there is the laundry chute, Stuart. Right there is the laundry That's sheet. where it falls, where the pants get stuck. Yeah, where the pants get stuck. So now, <laughs> interestingly, I think... I, I'm not sure, but I think the new owners want to put uh, the washer and dryer back down in the basement because they've got a, a really intriguing use for this space, I think. So with that, that remains to be told. But the lesson there is you use a house and you use those spaces based on your lifestyle, not the other way around. Don't let it be dictated, like I said at the very beginning. Don't let, it, let the spaces be dictated by how other people um, would use them, but by how your lifestyle dictates, they should be used. Don't let them boss you around. Don't anymore. let them boss you around, just like you don't let your friends boss you around. <laughs> I always love that. And this was always headquarters for us. If something was important, it needed to be put on this bulletin board. And I don't know if this will stay or not, but nevertheless, there is a broom closet Nothing in, exciting in nothing there. Nothing exciting in there. And then um, one bathroom we did redo was this one. And it 
the fixtures in here originally were a really brilliant, um, oh, kind of a royal blue. And they all came from an old, old, old home in downtown Oklahoma City, which would have date, dated back to the turn of the century, as does this uh, this floor. This dates back to the turn of the century and it was some remnants from an old hotel that when the previous owner redid this bathroom, both the flooring and this window came from a turn of the century downtown hotel. And then later we redid the bathroom and upgraded it a little bit. And so Stuart, one last room. After this break, let's go. Um, we'll end up where it began in the entryway. Well, this may have been one of the most heavily used rooms in the house, and it kind of was transformed over the years for different purposes, but we always just alluded to it as the entryway. I think maybe historically it would have been a music room. This is what I always considered the front door over here. Yeah, the front, yeah this was the family. This was the family entrance that everybody used, and if and people had walk-in rights. If they remember the family, they had walk-in rights to to yep. uh, to the house. All of this etched glass is original to the house. Yeah, it's so neat. And all of this cabinetry, this built-in cabinetry, in addition Fancy. to this beautiful window, uh, all of that is original to the house. Now, what was not original to the house is this chandelier, which I found at a thrift store and we installed later. Um, and also what is not original, original to the house are uh, the overhead panels. So there which were we mirrors had, up there? The yes, when we moved in, it, the ceiling was mirrored, which is a little weirdly kinky to me. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but we, we put in these recessed panels, stained them to look mahogany. And then also this room, if, if you look at this treatment, um, and you can see this forest green underneath. This room was painted forest green. And then we had this wonderful glazing, crackling technique done by those same artists who did the other room. And they basically put some kind of glaze on this and then some kind of coating that shrinks the, oh, wow. the surface color and then and it exposes and crackles I guess that's the term and crackles and exposes some of the color, original color underneath. And so I just love that, which is a way that we played with color in this house because when we painted the indoor, the green cabinetry inside, there is a red wash on it. And the red wash is the exact same color as my red dining room used to be. Yep. And that's what the interior cabinet color um, was painted. And then over the years, Stuart, you probably know this most as the bar. It was kind of a library bar. Yeah. And we had the whole bar set up so people could make themselves a drink when they came in. And then we had a chest here with two side chairs, which is where I would visit with people frequently. Um, a lot of people that would stop by and they would want me to sign my book or they, they would stop by the garden and I had a few minutes, I would visit with them in this entryway area. Um, and we had a cabinet here, which is where we would have our gloves and hats and things like <laughs> that and, and mittens. And it has welcomed, welcomed many a guest, has it not, Stuart? Yes, it has. And so that's, that's the entrance to, or this, I guess, kind of finishes out. Um, and I think it's also, I, I like the, the symmetry of that to close out on an entrance because mm. for every door that closes, another one opens. And we have loved this house and we have been good stewards of this house. And I think we have left it better than we found it. And hopefully the new owners will feel the infusion of love just hugging them when they come in and they will absorb it through the walls and the memories that we have created at this house. And it has been my honor to share this house with you over these few years. And I appreciate it. And I love the fact that you have loved it almost as much as I have. 
And on that, before I start crying, Stuart. We love you, Linda. Take care, and we'll see you back at the Storybook Cottage. Mm -hmm.